Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to use the 2Auto 3kg electric melting furnace. If you're interested in getting one, click the link in the description and you'll save 10% on your purchase in the checkout. So I'm going to be melting down this ingot that I made in the past. These are really handy to just quickly melt down rather than melting down some scrap that you have and having to keep adding and adding it. In today's video, I'm going to be doing some sand casting using green sand foundry sand. I'm going to be making more of these New Jersey Devil aluminum rectangular bars. So let me go through the process of sand casting. You first put the part into the mold box. You sprinkle some talcum powder on top. This is so the sand does not stick. Then you continue adding more foundry sand to the mold box, compacting it tight. And then you scrape off the top and put a flat surface on the back and then flip it over. Now for this cast, I have to carve out around it because it does not have any draft on the part. And if I removed it the way it is, it will actually pull sand out of it. And I don't want it to do that. Then I need to carve in a location where I'm going to be pouring the molten metal into, brushing off any of the loose sand that was left over. Add some more talcum powder to it and then add the other half of the mold box to it, making sure to put in the locking pins to keep it securely in place. Once that's finished, now we can add some more foundry sand to the box and pack it down tightly with the ramming tool all the way to the top. And just like before, scrape off any access to keep a level surface and add another flat surface to the back. Secure that with screws and pull the pins and remove the half from the mold. Now you can see the impressions made from the pattern and the carving that I did around the pattern. Carve out the location a little bit further where you need to pour the molten metal into and then brush away any of the excess. Tap on the pattern and try to loosen it up so you can easily remove it from the mold. I'm putting a flat surface on it and I'm going to flip it and give it a little tap and pull upward, hoping that they both came out. But unfortunately, only one of them came out. And the pattern still looks like it came out really well. So now I'm going to tap on the other one a little further and just pick it out gently. Now that that's complete, you can add the other half of the mold box back to this one and place the locking pins in place. Because this is a vertical pour, I am removing a part of the side. Now I am going to be able to pour into the top. This is why you fasten the flat surfaces with screws to the side. It will actually hold together the mold box. Now it's time to check to see if that ingot was melted, and it is. But I don't have quite enough for the part that I am casting today, so I'm going to add a few more little pieces of aluminum to the furnace. Trying to do it gently so I don't cause a splash. Checking back about 10 minutes later, and the metal is now fully molten and ready to pour. When I have aluminum left over in the crucible, I always like to pour it into ingots so I can easily melt it down later.
I let this sand cast set for about five hours. It's now a good time to open it up to see if it works. Remove the locking pin so you can now disconnect one half of the mold box from the other. And remove the top to expose the new cast. And these casts look fantastic. It's like a perfect replica of the aluminum bars that I used for the pattern. Now I need to cut off where I poured the metal into the sprue and clean it up and we'll see what it looks like. Well, that's it. A perfect replica of both of those New Jersey Devil aluminum bars. I hope you guys liked today's video. Please give it a like, comment below, and subscribe.